today we are uh, very happy to have Senior Vice President of Stadium Operations, Doug Bihar, joining us. Uh, Doug joined the organization in 1998. It is his 24th season with us. Uh, he oversaw the closing of the original stadium, was involved in the construction and design of the current stadium. Uh, he and his group are in charge of implementing the logistics behind all events at Yankee Stadium, from baseball to soccer to other large and small-scale business, community, and private events. He also oversees stadium security and the overall maintenance of the, of the facility. Um, you know, and, and one uh, kind of very important point uh, to bring up, Doug has been in the building uh, throughout the pandemic. Uh, he has... He and his group have spent a tremendous amount of time and resources um, looking into the best practices and how we could get to this point today. So this has been a, a long, long buildup getting where we are uh, on Thursday. Uh, Doug, could you speak a little bit to that before we take some questions? Sure, Michael. Thank you, and good morning to everybody on the call, and thank you as well. Um, yes, this, this, this journey to get to Thursday, our home opener started more than a year ago. Um, we... we March of last year when um, we closed, we still came in. We had a, a dedicated group of some ops folks that would work daily here in the building to try to understand what it was and what it is that we are dealing with. Um, we worked with industry experts. We collaborated uh, with um, anybody that we could. Uh, our, our owners were intimately involved uh, in, in the process to make sure that we um, were approaching this in, in the uh, most strategic way possible. The, for us, um, while we were able to open for our summer camp here last year and host a short season, we still wanted to evolve in our operations, in our health and safety program, continue to work with industry experts. Um, we sought to achieve the well health safety rating for the International Well Building Institute. We were the first stadium in the world to achieve this rating and it gave us a look um, and a checklist, if you will, of all of our health and safety procedures and protocols that we were putting in place to make sure that we were checking the right boxes uh, it, it being third party verified was important to us um, and, and we, the process has, is still continuing. We were still evolving, working very closely with the city and the state on, uh, and the Department of Health on, on protocols uh, and, and most recently, Michael, as uh, you know, we've been, uh, we've want, we're able to use Yankee Stadium as a vaccination site. Um, we're, we're hopeful that by the opener we will have uh, given close to 80,000 shots, uh, which we think is uh, remarkable and, and, and great work with uh, the, the state and the city on that effort. Doug, thank you very much. Uh, can you move the microphone a little bit closer? Sure. Great. Excellent. You know, one other note about Doug. Uh, Doug obviously is on the uh, stadium operations uh, side. If you do have questions related uh, specifically to ticketing, uh, we can work with you offline on that. You can just send, uh, send me or, or someone in our department an email. Uh, but with that, we can take a first question. Please use the raise hand function. And we can take a first one from Bob Clappish. Hi, Doug. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I'm curious now that uh, a decent number of fans will be in the ballpark. Will they be allowed to, to mingle in the concourses, buy food, uh, use the restrooms, and obviously the restrooms? But I'm just curious about the foot traffic in the ballpark uh, once they're inside. Yes, hi, Bob. So the, the, it, it's this experience, and first, let me say we're very excited to have uh, our fans back in the stadium, and we appreciate their patience and understanding throughout this entire process and recognize that, that Thursday will, will be a, a, a completely new experience for them at Yankee Stadium. However, we also recognize that, that uh, New Yorkers and folks all around the world are, are familiar with you know, the physical distancing and uh, you know, the, the face covering requirements that exist today in most places that are open. 
Um, so yes, concession stands will be open, but there is a distancing requirement uh, and, and uh, um, we'll have markers and signage all over to help people understand where and how to do that. Uh, but it should be a, uh, a seamless, uh, recognizable experience as, if, as they've had in the past. And just to follow up, will all the parking garages in the city be functioning as, as in the past? Most of the parking garages will be open as they have in the past, yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Bob. We can take a next one from Sweeney Murdy. Good morning, Doug. Nice to see you. Um, I was wondering if you could uh, spell out some of the procedures for both entry and exit, because I guess you know, and I guess they're both unique in their own way. With the entry to the stadium being kind of formal, but the the exit to the stadium is usually a little less structured. Are there certain procedures for both of those? Good morning, Sweeney. Uh, good to see you. Hope you're well. Um, so the, the, the experience, of course, will be a little bit different. We encourage all fans to get here early. Uh, as most everyone knows, there is a testing requirement in, in the, uh, New York. Um, so fans will have to uh, show up with either a negative COVID test or proof of vaccination. Uh, we're working very closely with our security team here at the stadium to try to make that process as seamless as process uh, as possible um, there will be temperature checks as well um, we we have our queuing lines will look like they have in the past except there'll be distancing between parties um, once inside the stadium uh, we've we've sold tickets in in pods so there'll be um, pod sizes of of varying degrees but most of them will be pods of twos and fours um, and like I said, the look and feel of that flow will feel very, very similar uh, than it has in the past, uh, just with, with some, some restrictions. Um, egress, uh, th there's no uh, formal protocol on how fans should leave, um, but like they have been in, in any other parts of what they're experiencing now, we, we just ask them to do it in, in a safe uh, in as distant uh, way as possible. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sweeney. We can take the next one from Bruce Beck. Hey, Doug, I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, is testing at site for fans a consideration at all, Doug? Hi, Bruce. Uh, good to see you as well. Uh, I, I, you know, we, we have... Um, been speaking with multiple um, different groups and believe there there are enough facilities within the five boroughs and close by that fans can have the opportunity to uh, to get tested fairly quickly. How do you define uh, seating in pods? Or the guests are separated by empty seats, but do pods necessarily have to be family? Are they a group of friends that commit to being a group of friends? How, how does that break down? Doug? Yeah, yeah. So the 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 seats uh, are are separated by a, at least six foot of distance, and uh, the seats that are not manifested are are tied uh, together, so they can't be used. Um, but yes, uh, gr people that are comfortable to come within a allowed pod size, two, four, three, five, whatever, whatever uh, they choose, uh, we are okay with them being in that group together. And my last question, just following up on what Bob Clappish asked, if you're on the contours, will they be one way going sideways, you know, going forward and back? Is that the way it's going to be instead of kind of a mishmash when you're racing for a concession? So uh, we, we looked at, that as a possibility but as you know bruce the the um seating restrooms concessions uh be very difficult to control one way of of, of traffic uh we believe that with how we have uh everything set up whether it's concessions and 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 uh the seating that our fans and guests will understand uh how to flow through that in a very safe and healthy way Thank you. Good luck, Doug. Thank you. We'll take the next one from Barry Bloom. 
Thank you. Uh, hi, Doug. How are you? Hi. So, the question for the future here, as as this plays out, more people get to come into the stadium. How much of what you're basically uh, putting into place now do you, do you envision staying in place permanently? And and then it's, okay, go ahead. So I I, I think th there are. Well, certainly we, we, we hope some of the distancing requirements get lessened, right? So we could, uh, you know, enjoy a fuller capacity at our, at our venue. Um, but our, our, a lot of our health and safety protocols, I would say, are, are, are here for the future. Um, you know, how we clean and disinfect is, is of paramount importance. And, and that just doesn't speak to COVID. It speaks to any other virus or pathogen that, that, that may exist. Um, so, uh, you know, our training, we, we, we spent a whole lot of time um, this off season and, and, and working towards this season on doing things that uh, fans and guests may not necessarily see. Um, we, we did an enormous amount of training with our staff on, on how to use PPE, on, how, and on the proper hand hygiene and, and you know, as, as it, it may sound silly, but how to wash our hands is of vital importance to us and uh, our cleaning and disinfection program we took uh, and are taking uh, biological samples of of surfaces throughout our facility and have been doing that since since march of last year to understand what if anything we're dealing with how our cleaning and disinfection program works and we're doing that in conjunction with industry experts who who work in um train and clean hospitals to, to create the same type of safe environment for our, our fans and guests. And, uh, you know, I'm assuming you're going cashless, right? We're, we're trying to be as frictionless as possible. So, yes, cashless is, is just that. And we'll have uh, um, cash to card machines in the facility for those folks that come uh, with cash that, that could uh, it's kind of like a reverse ATM. Yeah, I've been told by other stadium operators around the country that the cashless thing is kind of here to stay, that it's not something that's going to change. And one of the things I also noticed during spring training at hockey games I've gone to is that there are no vendors in the stands anymore. Is, is that something that is, is a dinosaur and we're not going to see anymore? I, I, it's hard to say. I think at least out of the gate, you're not going to see that for, for a lot of reasons. I think, you know, when when it comes to the health and safety piece of this as far as the distancing i think you know avoiding uh unnecessary interactions with people that we don't know is is always going to be a good thing thank you thank you Alyssa, you have the next question Yeah, so 20% for us is 10,850 tickets. Uh, face coverings are required unless you are actively eating and drinking. Uh, we will have um, a team of folks who are responsible for ensuring compliance on not just uh, face coverings, but occupancy in, in, in spaces. And of course, uh, the foot traffic flow, which Bob and Bruce alluded to earlier, is, is important to us to make sure we're managing that accordingly. And the days that there are night games that the vaccination site is still going to be open, is there any kind of uh, delay in when fans are allowed in? Is there any kind of transition period, any complications or challenges with that? No, we're, we're, we're excited to still be able to continue to do this. And, and we've been working very closely with the state and city on how to manage through that process. And um, we've, because we've been doing it for as long as we have, uh, seven days a week, and in some instances we, we did it around the clock, uh, we, we have it pretty dialed in and don't anticipate any issues between uh, vaccination in the morning and, and games at night. Thank you. Thank you. Andrea, you have the next question. Hey, good 
morning. Thanks for taking my question. I appreciate it, Doug. Um, just a couple things. The negative COVID test that fans need to have, how far in advance is it a day of test that they need to take? And then um, separately, I just wanted to, to confirm the seats separated by six feet. Is that the pods separated by six feet or, or in the pods, the seats are also separated by six feet? So, so thank you and uh, good morning. The pods are separated by six feet. So if you're in a pod of four, you're, you're sitting arm in arm with your group. Um, as far as the, the testing, uh, the requirement is a negative PCR test within 72 hours of the event or a negative antigen test within six hours of the event. Thank you. Thank you. Jack, you have the next question. Hey, Doug, good to see you. Uh, both you and Michael talked about how getting to this point has been more than a year long process. And I'm sure you've thought about everything that could go right and could go wrong. I know you can't predict the future, but What's on your checklist of things that you are saying, we have to make sure we get this right? Uh, good question, Jack, and good to see you as well. I, you know, we have to get everything right. I, I, there, there's, we, we've approached this as a kind of a pass-fail situation. We don't look at it as we're going to get graded with a letter. Um, everything we've set forth is, is important, it, it, it is tremendously important for us. Um, and it's, it's not just the cleaning and disinfection part, it's this signage we put up, it's the relationships we built, the collaborations we have with industry experts and, and making sure that the, uh, not just the fan experience, but the players, uh, the media, all of the stakeholders who will be in our building um, have a, as seamless as a process as they can. We recognize we're doing this for the first time. This is new for all of us. It'll be new for you. It'll be new for me. Um, you know, so, you know, patience and understanding on everybody is, is, is uh, certainly uh, going to be at the forefront. But we, we've, we've, because we've been looking at this for the past 12, 13 months, uh, we feel we're in a position to, to execute on those the right way. And then one quick follow-up. The governor's office gave a number for what it thought 20% was, but the Yankees have never given their number. I'm not going to hold you to the exact number, but what do you envision the attendance will be on Thursday? How many people are you allowing in the building? So we, we, the number we actually have approved at 20% is 10,850. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've, there's a lot of excitement around coming on Thursday. It is opening day. It is Yankee Stadium. There's always something very special about that. Um, and we, we anticipate, uh, you know, a, a, you know a, a, a good afternoon. The only thing we can't control is the weather, and we're, we're hoping uh, it cooperates. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We'll take the next one from Ronald Blum from the AP. Hey, Doug. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Well, good. Of the tickets, are they all reserved for season ticket holders? How did you decide, since you have such a small, limited number, what percentage, what go, who gets to buy them? And of the 10850, how many are set aside for players? Uh, Ron, I'll be honest with you, the ticketing part of it is a little bit out of my sweet spot, and that's something maybe Michael and I could follow up with you after. Sure. Ron, we can take care of that uh, offline. Okay. Feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next one goes to Kevin Reichert from Ballpark Digest. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time for this. I, I have two questions. The first sure. one is, have you uh, considered a vaccination-only section um, like other teams are looking at? We did not. Uh, we've, we've spoke through that, but we wanted to maximize the ability uh, to get folks in and also um, the, the ruling from the state is that um, regardless of vaccination, we still have to have a distancing requirement. Gotcha. And, and secondly, um, do you have uh, some sort of timeline in, in organizationally as to when uh, the capacity can be reevaluated. I know. I know you guys operate in, in 
a lot more complex circumstances in other major league teams, given, given the multiple layers of government. But, but do you have a goal where, where you want to say, hey, this is working, let's boost it to 35 or even 50%? So we, we've we're we're obviously working uh, very closely with the city and state, and and they're guiding us on on those efforts. And uh, you know, for us, it's 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 getting out of the gate and starting. We're excited about the twenty percent and 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 having the opportunity to show that we could do this in a in a in a safe way. Um, and we'll we'll let this happen in a very uh, organic way. Thank you. Thank you. Great. We'll take the next one from Christy Kaleshian. Uh, Christy, who are you representing today? Christy, I have to hit unmute. Great, thank you. Hi, uh, yes, um, sorry about the delay. Um, yeah, so I just want to know, would a proof of vaccination, um, let's say, um, let's say I'm vaccinated and I don't have, you know, like a positive test, but would a proof of vaccination um, actually be a replacement for, um, for that negative test? And also, if somebody has one shot and they're not fully vaccinated, would that be an issue with um, getting into the stadium? Yeah, so the, the proof of vaccination being fully vaccinated it will suffice in lieu of a negative test, but the requirement is 14 days after your second shot of Pfizer or Moderna or 14 days after your first shot of Johnson & Johnson. Great. Uh, we will take the next one from Gilma, Gilma Avalos from NBC New York. Hi, Doug. Sorry for the delay there. Will Yiki Stadium allow guests to use that Excelsior Pass app? And if so, how would that work? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and good morning and good question. Uh, absolutely. The, it's uh, uh, in, an important piece of our program. Uh, the Excelsior app uh, through the state of New York uh, is a great way for our fans to show up and have their uh, proof of vaccination or proof of a negative COVID test on their phones. Uh, it'll make it very easy for security to um, validate uh, uh, that part of their entry. Absolutely. And can fans use that as soon as Thursday? Absolutely, yes. It's ready to go, and our staff is trained on how to, uh, how to look for it and, uh, and use it. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. We'll take the next one from Bill Ladson from MLB.com. Yes, uh, will you continue to still have the pomp and circumstance before games? Uh, is that allowed? So the, that's that's uh, not allowed. Uh, there there are restrictions both from not only uh, government restrictions but league restrictions, but. We feel uh, opening day, uh, Yankee Stadium. Uh, th there's th that in itself is uh, will create enough excitement. Thank you, Bill. Uh, one thing, Doug, uh, we hadn't hit on just yet was uh, the vaccination site and the fact that it will be continuing through April 30th. Uh, could you speak to that and uh, kind of what your experience was getting that si uh, site up and running? Sure. Th uh, thank you, Michael. Yeah, uh, you know. When we uh, had the opportunity to host uh, a vaccination site here at the stadium, our, you know, our owners jumped at uh, that opportunity. It was important for us to be and continue to be uh, good community partners. Uh, it's always been a, uh, a mandate from, from ownership. Um, and we started working uh, very closely with the city and state on what would be the uh, best way to to function and and what would be the best experience for the folks uh, that were coming in to get vaccinated uh, it's been a very rewarding uh, experience as seeing folks come in and out as excited as they've been uh, to participate in this um, it, it went incredibly well over the course of time we've been doing it uh, that when 
the question came, can we pull this off even in season, or at least at the start of the season? Again, our owners uh, you know, made it clear, if we can make it work, let's make it work. Um, and working again very closely with the city and state on this, uh, we think we could manage uh, both not only non-game days, but game nights being able to uh, um, give shots and, uh, and, and do it in, a, in, in the right way.